Hey, we're back, riding side saddle. It's Tammy. And Lisa. Welcome. We're back um, with Pam, not with Pam, but following up on Pam's episode yeah. about postpartum stuff. Yeah. So um, we actually have two special guests today. One of them will hopefully be more of a nearly silent partner. <laughs> <laughs> a sleeper. <laughs> a sleeper, yeah. His name's Hudson. You might hear some delicious baby noises in the background. <laughs> He's in our recording studio today with his mom. He's he's drifting in and out, so I don't know. He might be a distraction. We'll have to see how this goes. But um, his mom, who happens to be my daughter, mm -hmm. is uh, is here with us today to talk about um, her pregnancy and postpartum experience. Welcome, Emily. Hello. Hi. Hello. hello. <laughs> so Hudson, how old is he? He is six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. Six weeks, little guy. Yeah. So you are you're like fresh on all of this so my I youngest baby is 25 mm -hmm. so yeah my my memory gets a little bit uh not fuzzy but it doesn't feel as like things that were really important then are maybe like kind of uh brushed over yeah in my memory yeah. now some of those details you try to forget yeah right and the other ones they still stick around <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they'll some stick of around them. forever <laughs> yes <stone. laughs> yes some of them are but the intensity isn't there but i feel like you are still yeah. pretty fresh yeah. maybe some of yeah. that's that intensity hasn't gone away just yet. Not quite. <laughs> no. I mean, we're, we're working with it. <laughs> Figuring out what's working for him and just getting to know each other all yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's Figuring true. Figuring it out day by day. Every yeah. day is different. And right. And sometimes one thing works one day and the next day he doesn't want anything to do with it. So that's it's all trial Tri and error. It is, isn't yeah. it? It's yeah. Kind of the name of the game, I it's feel, like parenting. They it, that and is exactly true. Forever. <laughs> yeah. Like, get used to that, right? Yes. Because trial and error is forever for the sure. name of the game for parenting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. I, I was, um, so Sarah, my stepdaughter, um, her favorite color used to be mint green. And we're um, redecorating bedrooms oh. and, you know, we got new furniture and all this stuff. So I, I asked her to go online and look for some new bedding. And I would have guessed completely wrong. Yeah. And I don't know that it is or isn't her favorite color, but what I would have picked for her is not what she picked at all. Mm. So even like something like that, Changes. what's your favorite color? Like you, it's yeah. again, like yeah. if you're always chicken in with yourself, cause you always change, that means other people are doing that too. Yeah, right. So checking in with them, I thought your favorite, I thought, you know, Kit Kat was your favorite candy. When did yep. you start hating that? Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Fair yeah. enough. I remember my favorite color was yellow. It was yellow for, for a long time. time. <laughs> you had a yellow Teletubby that was your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just started changing. It did. Yeah. Until one day you're like, ugh, yep. <laughs> yellow. I hate yellow. <laughs> That's Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put the Teletubbies away now. <laughs> You're 12? Okay, yeah. fine. I guess we can put them away. Right. <laughs> but yeah. So, yeah. Emily, give us a little bit of foundation. Like, this is your first child, first right? First child, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your experience. Definitely wasn't like the movies. Yeah. That <laughs> is for sure. It I, wasn't, huh? It not, Weird. <laughs> not at all, actually. Um, I had a pretty difficult pregnancy. Yeah. I was not in love with being pregnant like mm -hmm. I had thought I was going to be mm -hmm. and hoped I was going to be. They re it really makes it very dreamy. Like, very, doesn't yeah. like this is this is why I've been placed on this earth. Yes. I'm the most loving person. This is going to be so whole and and beautiful experience. Yep. Dot dot dot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, until you're actually not done. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Until so. things start really changing. Getting yeah. Into, yeah. 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 So give us a couple of highlights from your pregnancy. Um, and when I say highlights, so that's a broad, <laughs> yes. broad stand. Highlights, um, lights. <laughs> First trimester, obviously the nausea, mm. all that. I realized pretty quickly on, I had a bad food aversion to mm. beef. Ooh. Every time I would eat beef, 
come right back up. Oh, wow. It took me a minute to figure that out. Yeah. A um, few times, probably. few times, <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, something's going on. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't the greatest <laughs> at all. Um, and I was already low on iron. Oh. And so and then I had to figure out how to incorporate get that other to, yeah. without using, using red meat. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so that went away pretty quickly into the second trimester, though, thankfully. Good. Um, feeling great second trimester in the beginning. And then I started getting really swollen really quick. Oh. Where it just blew up like a balloon, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, didn't have preeclampsia. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that. Um. Just water retention. A lot of water retention. Um, was on the verge of having gestational diabetes. So that was kind of a kick or two. Yeah, you were so upset that day. I was so oh. upset. Um, just barely got away with it by the skin of my teeth, yeah. but we were good. good. That's good. <laughs> um, third trimester is when it really, really started kicking in. And I ended up leaving work earlier just because I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. I used to work at like this machine engraving shop and I couldn't be cutting metal on the shears anymore. I just, so you had a was physically not, demanding job, yes. right? And now your body is, is being physically demanded yes. from the inside. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, so it would just was not working out in a lot of pain. A yeah, lot of you pain. had a lot of sciatica pain. That was Horrible. really more of your issue yep. than, you know, just just being pregnant. Yeah. You had that it was side on effect. Top of it and mm-hmm. So being like on that. your feet a was a lot of pelvic pain. Yeah. It just was not working out. Yeah. For so, me. So earlier when we were chatting you had talked about how low you were carrying Hudson oh, yeah. and, you know, that impact in your hips. Yeah. I mm-hmm. I think every pregnant woman probably um, has there's impact in your hips and yeah. it's like my oh hips my hurt gosh. just talking about yeah, it yeah right <laughs> rolling over yeah. rolling over oh, in bed oh, oh yeah oh, no, forget God. about yeah. that when, I slept on the couch for the last month yeah I couldn't mm-hmm. sleep in bed anymore yeah but when you're carrying a child that really is sitting very low yeah that I think impacts even more substantially oh yeah yeah so you had some sciatica yeah. issues that you were dealing with yeah mm. uh, and then uh, it was my forty week checkup. And it was, I was just about to leave the house, looked at the hospital bags, and I said, no, <laughs> we're not going to need those you, today. You mean you didn't listen to your intuition? <laughs> I didn't. I said, you're wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Don't be went, silly. I did get the dog stuff ready, though, just in case, right? So they were good to go if they had to get picked up or whatever. Um get to my appointment my blood pressure just went through the roof oh boy oh, they now you have up. preeclampsia they hooked me up to the non-stress test i was having contractions on and off the whole entire time and they're like well it looks like you're having a baby today ah. and i was like shit <laughs> <laughs> i mean great yeah. Yeah. I'm done being pregnant. <laughs> i am so much done but i was not but he you're was not ready, not ready. Uh-huh. no he, he wasn't. was not ready okay. i wasn't dilated at all yeah um so they Put me straight into the labor and delivery room, started getting me going. They ended up having to mechanically dilate me, Uh which was not fun at all. Like physically? They had to, it's called the Foley bulb. So it kind of looks like a catheter that they put into your cervix and they fill it with fluid. Oh, and manually and open it. So it's like it. a crank. Yeah. yeah. They taped it to my leg with a lot of tension to literally open my cervix up. Oh my but, god. And then it horrible. just it does sound falls horrible. out. The once, ball does once your once cervix your, is open. I think it was enough. like four oh, centimeters wow. or something like that. Wow. It just falls out. That um, sounds traumatic, honestly. It was horrible. <laughs> I yeah. It was absolutely horrible. But by by opening your cervix, it's also intending to to get labor really moving too. Kick started, yeah. So once that had fallen out, my doctor had broken my water, Mm -hmm. and that's when things really started to amp up. I really tried. They gave you pitocin too. They yeah, they gave me pitocin, which they started the pitocin right as soon as the Foley bulb had fallen out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I 
didn't really have a set birth plan. I was just kind of go with the flow. I'll just leave here with a baby. That that is <laughs> my end my goal, plan. right? right. <laughs> we're both that we're both healthy, right? right. He's happy, right. yeah. Right. And we'll just right. Roll I'll put with the my punches. vagina in a bag, yes. and we will go home. <laughs> Throw it over my shoulder, and here we go. So yeah, so I was hooked up to pitocin the whole entire time. Uh, a lot of it is a blur to me. Mm. A lot of it. I was talking with Blake about it, and he's bringing some stuff up, and I was like, what are you talking about? Mm. I don't Black remember out. a lot. Yeah. I either blacked out, or I don't, no, I don't, I don't you know. You didn't black Just, out, but... Not like but you out, black out. I think out, you shift but, gears. Yeah. For mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. So, I also think it's a protective mechanism. Like, your brain... It's so traumatic and painful that your yes. brain it shuts that off. Just yes. It doesn't allow it you to remember it. Like the recording Correct. device stops recording. Correct. Yeah. Like, oh, we don't need to bring no, this back up again. <laughs> I think it's. I think it is that like a pain management mm-hmm. system kicks in. Yeah. But I also think it is like um, a, a species survival mechanism. Because be if you remembered all of those things, you would never have another baby. Right. Nobody never. would. One, Not no. just you, One but baby nobody. Per, per mother. Per, right. Yes. Right. Right. And yes. and you know. Really, we wouldn't have enough people then. So, right. right. I feel like it's a like it is an intentional defense, like mechanism. genetic. Yes, yes, right. Protection of the yes. species. So yeah, you were right. there though, Tammy. I was for was for there. the birth. The yeah, thing. yeah. Let me ask you a question. You know, now looking back at it, right? You remember all of these things. Did you see maybe where that shift might have been for Emily to be able to say, "All right, like this is so intense," like. Her saying, I, I blocked a lot of that stuff out. Do you remember, like, a point in time where you would have been like, no, this is so traumatic. Like, not, she can't possibly retain this. Not necessarily. She was extremely vocal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and not just with making a lot of noise, mm-hmm. but, like, she was very talkative for most of it. Yeah. Um, I guess if I had to really think hard about where would a shift have taken place, it's when... So she she did have an epidural. Yeah. Um, First, I got the Dilaudid though, because I wanted yes. to try to hold off on yeah. the epidural because they scare me. Yeah. Like they're no joke. You it's, know, it's a medical it procedure. Is, it is, right? yes. Yes. They're messing around in your spine. Correct. So. Right. 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 So they gave you just IV pain meds mm-hmm. that only lasted for like an hour, mm-hmm. and they won't. Her doctor would not authorize another round of that because they don't want to risk delivering a sleepy baby because mm-hmm. it all, not just makes oh. the mother relaxed it makes the baby relaxed mm-hmm. and they don't want to take that risk right. well she was nowhere near ready to, to deliver, deliver. To deliver. Mm-hmm. so no. it was it was nothing or an epidural mm-hmm. and so she tried nothing for a while and and that wasn't anymore. happening yep. i had horrible bla- bad back labor, labor the that whole was like time my, where i yeah. labored was all in my back and i think put, like just having had pitocin right that That's artificial enough. way Ugh. like that i have heard that having no that joke. kind of means that it's going to be probably a more rough ride yeah. than it had it done naturally, naturally. right yeah. right i remember with my first baby um erica I had all back labor too, and I had Pitocin. Mm. I went into labor myself, but I wasn't progressing. So they had to, you know, try to dial it up a little. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's interesting. I wonder if there's any correlation between back labor and Pitocin. I don't have any idea. That is a great question. It's just a similarity we both have. Similar experience. Anyway, so after she had um, The the epidural, She rested for a little bit. Mm -hmm. She was still moaning a lot, so she wasn't completely without sensation. No. My, it felt more like my left leg was just sleeping, mm. like you, th- that tingling. Yeah, I could still move my right leg around though, mm-hmm. and usually, I feel like it wasn't maybe in the right spot. You, well, he asked where it was in my back when he put it in. He's like, "Where am I?" I'm like, no. oh, I "You're open my back. I, yeah. I can't see. <laughs> right. It I can't feels feel. like the yeah. middle." And he's like, "Well, left or right." You're asking me I the middle. I hope I don't know where these are supposed wow. to. Well, and when go it's in. your first baby and you've never had never an epidural had for any reason, right. no. I don't. I, I don't wouldn't know, be, I know wouldn't how to know. answer that. I right. never had an epidural. Yeah. Right, right. I don't know what that is supposed to feel what like. Right. right. So I think after 
when that started to wear off, oh, our silent partner is not that silent. <laughs> He's like, let me tell you what happened from my little perspective. You all are wrong. You all are wrong. And I'll tell you why. So at some point, that epidural wore, it didn't wear off, but it, it moved out of place. So she was no longer having any pain relief. So I think right in between, None. like, the she was resting and moaning because she had a lot of pressure, not really pain, but just pressure, yeah. to it's not working at all. Oh. When it stopped working, and now she's in the transition stage of labor, I think that's, if I had to take, if I had to make yeah. a guess, yeah. that's where I would that's say where, it happened. The, yeah. And that's where I feel that is what happened. My body just, my head said, nope, we're not going to remember this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Block you yeah. out. This. Yeah, you kind of just have to go inside yourself, mm-hmm. yep. really. It's interesting, yeah. and I did not have traumatic births, so I'm not comparing to your no. situation at all. But I think that when I listen to people talk about their own birth story mm-hmm. and my own specifically, that transition point, like I mm. I remember when I transitioned um, for both of my children, and at, it was at that point, even like even a non-traumatic birth, right? I remember... Um, when I was when I was delivering Deidre, there was a point in time that I said, I can't do this. Like, yeah. I, I didn't say it kindly, but <laughs> I said it inside of my head, like, I can't mm-hmm. do this. You need to help me. Mm-hmm. Like, something else outside of me, yeah. like, take over, because I'm, I'm out. I'm I can't. Tapped out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and at that point, too, it was almost 24 hours, I feel. Yeah. Close. And so I'm exhausted. Right. And now I have no pain management. Right. And I wasn't prepared not to have any pain management. Right. Because up to that point, I did have something. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I just, I definitely didn't handle it the best way. (laughs) I I do remember at one point. Looking back, I I think you're here. I do realize I probably could have handled it a little bit better. No. Well, if you could have, you would have. I would have, yeah. You can't even say no. Right. I wouldn't judge yourself on that. No, I'm not It is the most animalistic place that you will ever be in your life. I was making some animalistic noises. You were, and I remember (laughs) at one point you said, and you people thought I was loud last night. You ain't seen nothing yet. (laughs) Don't remember that. You don't? (laughs) Thanks for bringing that back But yeah, yeah, it pushed for almost three hours. Yeah, poor thing. He is born two forty one. Started pushing at noon, and mm-hmm. I just really remembered the doctor coming in and was like, "All right, it's got to be close. The end is near." And three hours later, yeah, right? <laughs> and he ended up having to get vacuumed out. Oh. I I I remember the tugging sensation of that and Uh trying to push with it, and it. I just wanted him out. Yeah, Yeah, I literally were begging for help. Yeah, Yeah. I did not want to wait for contractions anymore. I just needed him out. Yeah, you were literally begging, please Mm -hmm. help me, someone, please help me. And I think if you had pain management, he wouldn't have used a vacuum. More than likely, I really he, c- yeah. because you were progressing. Yeah, but I think because you were in so much distress, the, yeah. the doctor was like, "We got to get this baby mm-hmm. out before he gets to be in distress." Right. Well, right. or before it's he a, ends up with a, a situation where the mom is is not just in distress but yep. in real trouble. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Wow. Mm-hmm. So he came out healthy, though. He That's did. Great. Six pounds, eleven ounces. That's great. Little cone shaped for a bit. Well, but I think that that's by design. Got a like big they're old, all supposed to be that yeah, way. They big are. old bruise on the top of yeah. his head for a while. From the vacuum. From the yeah. 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 But other than that, me and him were both healthy at the end of the day and that's cool. yeah. we're able to get discharged at the same time. So that's I mean well that was I couldn't I can't it, complain. Right? Yeah, right. I can't mm-hmm. complain. Right. That was my end goal. Right. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that, that's the most important. Yeah. 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 But then coming home. I definitely had the touch of the baby blues. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. Like, you know, we kind of set this up um, with the previous episode to talk about that fourth trimester yeah. mm-hmm. and really what that incorporates. One thing is the rush of hormones oh, yeah. and the change so drastically how that can impact you as a mom. Yeah. So. It just, 
It was, I want to say, the second day of being home is when I just felt this overwhelming sense of something bad is going to happen. My anxiety was through the roof. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually not a super anxious person. Mm -hmm. Um, I just couldn't get myself to settle down. Oh, honey. (laughs) I couldn't get myself to just relax. Yeah. Uh, overthinking, bringing overthinking, in like weird just, possibilities, everything under the sun. Yeah, uh, I obviously very sleep deprived. Yeah, right. Trying to yeah, get, you you got a third shifter. Yeah, for yes. a baby. <laughs> you trying <laughs> just to get a hold of everything, get yeah. a grasp on everything. I mean, I've been around babies my whole, pretty much my whole life, mm-hmm. but yeah. they were never my own. Right. So it was never that huge responsibility. Like. Yeah. It's kind of, you can't hand them off right now, no, you know? Right. Uh, right. They're yours. You're it. Mm-hmm. I was very thankful, though, that my husband was able to, see, I say able to, but he took some time off work. That's so awesome. he took two weeks off work. The whole w- first week we were in the hospital, but then the second week he was able to help around the house. And that's great. We, me and him were just kind of tag teaming stuff and everything. And, Towards the end of the second week, I could feel kind of more myself. Mm-hmm. I wasn't as anxious. I didn't have that feeling like something bad is going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's okay, mm-hmm. you know? And that's typically, I was looking up baby blues a little bit more too, and I guess that's kind of when things start to really shift. And, From a hormonal perspective, yeah. even things yeah. out a little bit. A little bit, right? Yeah. Like there's a whole lot of things that are still happening oh, in your body. Most and yeah. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. 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 So the first couple couple of days were really hard or yeah. the first couple of days were really hard. Uh I just it was just this feeling something horrible was going to happen. Aww. And once you get that feeling, mm-hmm. it's really hard to shake it. Yeah. And well, I guess something did because then our cat passed oh, that no. Tuesday after yeah. and that was our very first baby oh, and he no. went in the worst way. But then after that, I feel that's when I, after he passed, that's when I started feeling a little bit better. Yeah. That was also the time that I stopped breastfeeding because it was too much. Yeah. There was just too much going on. I was exhausted. I just felt like I was just constantly pumping yeah. and washing parts. Yeah. And then you sit down for a minute. Oh, now he's up. It's a full-time Feed. job. It's a full it cycle. Is. Yeah. It is. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I just... I wanted to try to keep doing it, but I knew it just wasn't good for me mentally. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I needed, I needed that little break. Yeah, I can understand that. When you get to a place where you just have to take something off your plate. Yeah. yeah. And and that was really the that only, was only thing, thing you right. could think yeah. of. Right. And I also wasn't eating how I should have been. Mm-hmm. I really wasn't eating at all mm. because just. Everything You're was going to on, it out. Yeah. and so then my my supply didn't dip, but I wasn't producing any fat in my milk. So then he wasn't gaining any weight. I see. And so then it was, yes, can I eat better? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't the. I was looking for a fast, easy option, right? Mm-hmm. And so we just switched him to formula, and after that, things seemed to get a little bit easier, in a way. Mm-hmm. And then we just kind of kept rolling with it. And... Well, and I suppose part of that is like, you know, you can make you can make the bottle. You know exactly mm-hmm. what to expect, right? Yep. You know how it's all going to play out mm-hmm. when you're nursing it. Um, that's There's a lot of guessing game to that. You mm-hmm. don't know how much they're actually getting. getting right? yep. There's um, there's a lot of pain component to it. There's a lot of, um, you know, I have to take care of this yep. all on my own. There isn't anything your husband would be able to help with. From that perspective. Mm-hmm. So when you are feeling overwhelmed, that feels like something that you could negotiate a little. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that is kind of what happened. I, there was one night he had woken up probably for the third time that night and I was just exhausted. And so Blake got up and I made him a bottle and just kind of handed him off. And I was like, you got it? Cool. I'm going to bed. Right. <laughs> um, that was also the same night that I guess this is what Blake told me because I don't remember it, but I was sleeping and when Blake got into bed, 
I guess I popped up and I just started freaking out and like crying. And I was like, where's the baby? Where's the baby? And he's like, he's right next to you. Like he's in his bassinet. And I rolled over and I touched him and I went straight back to sleep. Mm. Oh, that's frightening. It was, yeah. When he asked me the next morning, he was like, do you remember, like, kind of freaking out? And I was like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. He was like, you, something, I don't mm, know. You sleep just, deprivation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 It does Completely. weird things. Yeah. yeah. But uh. <laughs> going into the seventh week, though, it is getting a little easier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's a long time, it is right? A long so time. when you come home with this new baby and and you're having all of those feelings, whether it is baby blues or you're anticipating, Mm -hmm. you know, your intuition is trying to prepare you for something like your cat dying, right? Your pet dying. Um, It's not helpful to say to someone, well, wait till week seven. You'll be great. No, no, no. No, (laughs) No, because you're in the thick of it. Exactly. Right. 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 Well, and even before, obviously now I had, I called you one day because I just needed a couple hours of uninterrupted sleep. Right. I was felt myself kind of hitting a breaking point. Yep. And I knew it wasn't it wasn't healthy for me, him, anybody. Anybody. You're right. So I right. called her and luckily she was able to come call the, in the, the troops. Next day. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The tribe. And I yeah. got a couple hours of just literal uninterrupted and woke up and I felt like a little spring chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa. And conquer the world. <laughs> but well, and I think that that really speaks to how, you know, we've talked about this a little bit in, you know, it takes, it takes a village. Oh, right. Most like, definitely. This yep. isn't by design. It's not something that you're supposed to be able to ch- take on all on your own. Mm-hmm. We're, it's, mm-hmm. we're not set up that way. We aren't. And it's a, it's a two or three or four person job to take care of this little person. And yourself. And yourself. Yeah. And exactly. yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because and you've both gone through a really significant, and in your case, traumatic yeah. situation. Right. right. Most definitely. There's also, I had been meaning to make it more of a point to get myself ready every morning. So he usually wakes up around 5.30, sometimes 5, right around there. He'll have a first bottle and then he will fall asleep right again after it. Mm-hmm. So then that's when I go put him down. That's my time, even though I want to go back to bed. But I know I will feel better oh, good throughout the day mm-hmm. yeah. if I take that time to take a shower, yeah. have my coffee, yeah. eat something, maybe do a load of laundry. Set yourself and up then, a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So making sure I get ready in the morning and then also doing like unwinding at night. Whether that's sitting in the bath for a minute or washing your face, brushing yeah, your yeah. teeth again, like Ooh, your nighttime routine, oh. yeah. your but nighttime routine, that is right? Yeah. What I've been really implementing within, like, really this past week. Yeah, and it makes you it feel makes a you little feel bit more human, yourself, right? right? Yeah, you feel like a person again. It just—that's what I have found has been working for me right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Even if I'm not leaving the house. Right. Right. Well, just because you're not leaving the house doesn't mean doesn't you don't mean need a shower. Right. right. Yeah. You want no. your teeth not to have fuzz on them. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want your face to break out like crazy. Yes. So maybe right. you're, you're already feeling wash it a little bit. Right. Yeah. All sorts of things. You don't need to yeah. look in the mirror and not like that, too. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. Gosh. That's a lot. So mm-hmm. what I what I am taking away from that is a couple of like helpful hints, I guess, is pay attention to yourself. Mm-hmm. When you know that you're getting to a point where it's not good for you, say something. Yep. Talk to somebody. Reach whether it's your whether it's your partner or your your family or whom whomever, your neighbor, somebody like is there any way you could come for just a couple of hours? Right. I really just need a, I just need a break. Right. Um that's really important. When when you're at that point in you know where you're like I got to take something off my plate and I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Even something even something small. It could be I don't know, can someone please come over and do my laundry? Can right. someone mm-hmm. please come over and vacuum my house cuz you know we've got pets and the dog hair is floating in the air. Like right. I need someone to clean for me. Right. Yeah, in right. your case it was I I can take breastfeeding off the mm-hmm. table, right? Like yep. that that, that worked for you. That was one thing that I was able to give up. 
Yeah. yeah. Gosh, that's a lot of stuff. So then, so you had preeclampsia when you I delivered. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was something that you didn't realize doesn't go away. Like when the placenta's out, the preeclampsia is out. No, there's a post eclampsia, I believe is oh. what it's called. Wow. So you're still able to get, be preeclamptic up to six weeks postpartum. And that means that. what? Like, for I'm, that experience, what, what I'm did that not a hundred. I so when I delivered, it was I was done with it. Yeah, I didn't oh, okay. get it postpartum. Yeah, um, but nobody ever talks about that. No, I the fact didn't that you can that. still it can continue. So go like on. You have blood extremely pressure, high blood pressure, blood pressure okay. swelling, yeah. seeing um, the spots. Yeah, when you like in your vision and mm-hmm. everything, mm-hmm. all the same I, symptoms and signs as. When you're pregnant, but, but it, preeclampsia. Yeah, it just doesn't be. go away. Wow. Yep, headaches, all that. So I never got the headaches or anything. They were able to catch mine fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, thankfully. So your onset for preeclampsia was right when they were deciding, now mm-hmm. it's just time to deliver this yep. child. So well, it really was only a couple days his yeah, day early. Was, anyway. yeah, he yeah. Was, yeah. It was two days from his due date, yeah. and now it's already scheduled to be induced that day anyways yeah. so yeah got it so thankfully you didn't have thankfully a long yeah it wasn't time super early right. Right. no right, right. that's right good. yeah but yeah nobody ever talks about the fact that you still have to watch out for all those signs and symptoms yeah. even postpartum yeah. on top of everything else right right it's part of integrating back into your life yeah. and bringing this person home. Yep. And like you said earlier, figuring that person out. Yeah, right. Like oh, that's, yes. wow. Yeah. That's so much just and by it itself. It is so yeah. much. You had talked a little bit earlier um, when we were chatting about, you know, have, letting it be okay for you just to set that baby down. They may oh, be yeah. even screaming their little, you know, their yep. little cute heads off. Yeah. But being able to walk away, right, even just for five minutes. Just, yeah. Stepping outside for a minute, yep. taking mm-hmm. a deep breath. You know he's got a fresh diaper and he's been fed and burped and he just doesn't, you don't, you've done everything you can yeah. and you feel like you're going to lose it. So yeah. you just have to put him down. Again, put knowing him where that crib. line is. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Walk away for a minute. Yeah. Right. 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 And they'll be fine. Yeah. Right. They're they'll in a still safe be environment. There. <laughs> they'll probably come still back. be cre- screaming. screaming. <laughs> yeah. Probably so. Yeah. yeah. But then you were able to kind of compose yourself. Pull Regroup. Yourself together. Yeah. 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 Collect a little bit and go back in. <laughs> and there we go. And just start again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try the cycle over again. Are you hungry? Right. Do you need another diaper change? Right. Whatever. (laughs) It's just a you burpee. burpee. Are you gassy? Yeah. Yep. Or do you just want to be held? Sometimes that's it too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was in for nine months, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Can't put me down. (laughs) And now I know you want to make dinner, but I really want you to hold me. Yeah. 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 Um. More recently, you had a, uh, I don't know, episode, I guess I'll call it. Oh, goodness, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, so I went, what was it, last Friday? Yeah. I started getting really bad abdominal pain, which is also a sign of preeclampsia. Yeah. Or post preeclampsia. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, is right abdominal pain. I guess it's more so upper than lower. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Your organs are shifting down. So something was not feeling right. It just felt like somebody was stabbing me with a hot knife just straight through. And so I was like, well, is my appendix about to rupture or what is going on? Mm -hmm. Something doesn't feel right. So ended up going into the emergency room. They did ultrasound to make sure. I also didn't know this can happen. But your eggs and your fallopian tubes can... Like play your jump ovaries. Rope. Yeah. What's my, is it Not, eggs? Yeah. <laughs> your ovaries um, and your fallopian tubes can like just get twisted. They can just kind of post do, yeah. post labor. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Just maybe because settling of down, all of the everything's cramping, moving yeah. around. Wow. Yep. Okay. Everything's shifting back. Okay. Yeah. 
So they were checking that. Yeah. That didn't happen. So I was like, cool, I guess. <laughs> right. I didn't know that, that was a great, thing. But, yeah. right. but it's, something um, still hurts. Yeah. yeah. So they ended up taking me for a CT. Everything looked normal on the CT. They can't find the source of my pain besides a cyst. And I'm like, okay, well, what is this cyst? I don't really like that word. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a little scary. Right. Um, I guess I, it's the Bartholin gland cyst mm. or the Bartholin gland and then which it can get turns a cyst. into a cyst. I see. So right. there's a gland inside the wall of your vagina Correct. and it there's got two of them. Oh, interesting. on both sides. Ah. Yes. And it got inflamed, irritated, obstructed prob- probably something yeah. because Damaged. of their experience yeah. Yeah. Right? of labor mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. everything like that. It's very traumatic. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just fills with fluid because it's supposed to, it's there to lubricate your, your vagina and yeah. everything. Yeah. And so if it gets irritated, inflamed, obstructed, wow. everything, it gets clogged. And then so all that fluid obviously has nowhere Stays to go. There. And that's when the cyst occurs. Creating pain. Yep. Wow. Yep. Pelvic pain. It just. Obviously, you're tender and sore down there anyways after just delivering a baby. So I didn't think much of it. I was like, I this is pretty is normal, normal, right? Right. right. I was never right. informed by my doctor to be on the lookout of this stuff. So that was I've kind never. of heard about this. Right. That was the thing because it was like five weeks postpartum yes. when this happened. It's not, it wasn't um, like, you know, a couple of days no, after. Right. My stitches had already fallen out, so it so wasn't... you should have been feeling better by right, that point. Right. Maybe not your old self. No, but... but you shouldn't still be hurting. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like Emily and I talked about this a little bit. You know, the baby has plenty of checkups postpartum, right? Mm-hmm. But the mom doesn't. No. Right. You wait for six weeks before somebody yeah. takes a look at you when you've had all kinds of things happening. So many. Mental, physical, mm. emotional, hormonal. Uh, how do you know what's normal? How do you yeah. know what's not? How do you know when to be alarmed? How do you know when to yeah. call and ask if this is normal? Like, Well, and especially yeah. with having being him being my first child right Right. never been through those right Right. it's it's interesting you know as you're talking and 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 as i'm learning about these maybe obscure maybe not obscure obscure to me because i just didn't know about plenty of these things but um it just makes you remember how childbirth is a true like it's still kind of a life or death experience, yeah, honestly. Is, right. And yep. even after you're done delivering, yep. right? Like there's so much. And what I'm using trauma very broadly because mm-hmm. it is traumatic regardless yeah. Oh, yeah. of whether or not it was picture perfect yep. or a situation like you had. Um, like there is enormous amounts of trauma that take place mm-hmm. in the female body. Oh, absolutely. As, you know, as Through a all pregnancy right, and during delivery. Right, right. Yeah. That it truly is like... I don't think we give it the credit that no. we should give it to mm-hmm. say, oh, you know, women are designed for this. Everything's fine. Well, we're designed for it, but it doesn't mean that it's not, like, incredibly, I don't, I keep saying the word traumatic, but, like, just, yeah. 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 And magical. Yeah. That and your magical. body can do all of that and literally shift Yes, all of your everything. parts right to accommodate for yeah. yes mm-hmm. and, and then, then they have to shift all back, back into down. place mm-hmm. yeah. without anything going amiss yeah. right yeah and that was a big thing that i had brought up when i had gone to the emergency room i'm like i don't know what's going on i am five weeks postpartum so is it just everything is settling back down i have no idea right you have nothing to compare it no. to no right mm-hmm. right I, I don't know yeah eesh so it's the talking again, right? Like checking right. in with yourself and talking to people. Yep, right. This doesn't feel right, but maybe it is. Yep. Right. What have or you Or maybe it's not. Have you ever... Right. Right. Yep. Right. right. Gosh. It's that tribal knowledge piece. It is, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. So one of the, one of the um, uh, treatments, I guess, for that type of cyst um, is to take sits baths. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I had, for sure my oldest... I don't remember if, if 
if they did it with when I had you, Emily, or if it was just when I had Erica. I definitely remember it with Erica. They sent you home with this little bowl that you put in the toilet. It's called a sitz bath. You put some warm water in there and you just soak your bottom. Mm -hmm. Five minutes, 10 minutes, a couple times a day. Well, that happens to be the treatment for, for getting rid of for that the gland, yeah, yeah, the bar. Mm, what is, is it called? Bartholin. Bartholin glands. Pronouncing it wrong, but yeah, that's the treatment for that. To you know, some um, just, wet heat. Yep. Mm. Not and it's not. You don't put hot water in, but it's just warm, right? right? Well, warm yeah. water is like the god gift of any Honestly. postpartum right? woman. It really is. Right? Yes. Any, anytime you're in the bathroom, yep. warm, water, warm water, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. don't be without it. No. Right, right. No. That's where a bidet would be brilliant. I'm yeah. telling you. I was, yeah, was going to get one right before we had them. Just Lisa has eyes. one, and she loves it. <laughs> if you have the parts, you should definitely have one. I feel like it just, it just, just has to come just, as part yeah. of the package. Yeah, it does over in Europe. I know, you, I know. You really need to consider it. Yeah, <laughs> even even if you're not postpartum. No. Yeah, <laughs> like every month. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Yep. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. like well, thank you. <laughs> Stay a little fresher. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Gosh, it's a lot though, isn't it? It is a lot. Yeah. So welcome to your new life. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> you're a great mom. Thank you. I said he's to your, happy, healthy. You. He's Aww. growing. Hi, baby. He's getting all big. <laughs> oh, he's like, Mom, you are the greatest. Yeah. I just Thank love you. you so much. He makes the best baby noises. He does. Uh. I can't wait to listen to this. Because he was really in there. Yeah. He does. He does not want to be a silent partner. No. He doesn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> the heck with that. I've got things to say. <laughs> now let me tell you about my experience. Yeah. <laughs> I remember all of it. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, are we working one out? <laughs> yeah, he's trying to figure out what's shifting around in there too. Right. Yeah. Right. Emily, thank you so much for spending this time. I I cannot imagine how you managed this. Right? You have a six week old baby, and you're sitting in the recording studio. Yeah. <laughs> with him so yep. thank you for well, flexing you. to be able to share your um, experience and yeah. just no problem broaden perspective right yep. mm -hmm. right yep. so if you if you had one or two things that you would do different if you could what would they be oh real quick real quick ah <laughs> i wasn't prepared for this oh, okay <laughs> Or, or one or two pieces of advice that you would give to somebody who's about to have a baby. Yeah. Really just listen to your body. Mm. Being in tune with your body is a huge thing. And give yourself grace. Oh, love I love it. Just, oh, that gave, gave me goosebumps. Me goosebumps. <laughs> you, you're brand new at this. Yeah. yeah. He, right. Your baby's brand new. You know, everything is new for everybody. Yeah. So. I love it. Mm. Thank you. Thank I was you ready so for much. those ones, but not the other ones. Not the rest, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Gosh, I, I feel like somebody told you to give yourself grace. I don't I know who that like was. I feel like a little birdie. <laughs> Sitting. I don't know if your mama said that, but maybe. In here. Think back. Think back. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think that wraps this one up. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. No problem. Emily and Hudson. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, riding side saddle. You can find us on Facebook, on um, YouTube, YouTube Spotify. Spotify. I think we're still working on the Instagram thing. We are. <laughs> and and we've got some other things in the works, too. We're trying to figure some stuff out. But Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. For following along. Thanks for Mind Garden Media. Mind Garden Media. We Every couldn't time. do this without them. So yeah. thank you very much All right. for putting it together. We'll talk yeah. to you next time. Sounds great. Bye. See ya. Bye.